Well, we're back in uh, in in town. Well, we're not back in town. We are in the town right now. Shermer's Cher Shelmer, what a name! Shelmerston Chandlery. Stocking a wide range of ropes and lines, boat hardware, safety equipment, maps, and charts. Whether you are a fisherman or a leisure sailor, we probably have what you need. If we don't, we can order it from the mainland. The Camel Pub? It's a pub. Camel has been on Shelmerston's Koi side as long as anyone can remember. No one knows which came first, the name or the distinctive double hump roof. <laughs> the Camel Head was erected by Arthur Bowen, the grandfather of the current landlord Godfrey in 1929. There's a lot of places here. Chandlery Shed. Shelmerston Chandlery sells all the larger items from the shed. It was originally the front half of the Beatrice Anne. Shelmerston Lugger that was saw in half. She was the end of her career as a fishing boat. You can find the stern of the Beatrice Anne just along the quay. The Skylark. They work day and night fixing up this boat, but it never seems to get finished. Maybe we should just... There's someone here with a memory, though. The fish market. Uh, let's zoom in for a little bit. Oh, we can zoom in even more. Simon Grunt, captain of the Shelmerston cricket team. All right. It was the day of the island cricket match out on the volcanic sand spit. We had lost to Appledore for the past three years, and it was my first year as captain. I didn't want another loss on my watch. Ogden had just come back from New Zealand and told me he'd be up for it. I wasn't sure. I remembered Ogden from school. He was lanky and good in the field, but batting... Hmm... Not sure. Are they playing this on a sandbank? Ogden showed up with his own bat. He told me he'd won it in a pub in Dunedin, and that it had belonged to a famous New Zealand player. I wondered whether I should put him into bat at all, but Ogden whispered to me that he'd been playing on deck all the way home. I knew Ogden wasn't a bluffer, but he was never the guy who got picked for the first team at school. Still, I had nothing to lose. Ogden hit a six with his first stroke. We went wild! And just when I thought it must be a fluke, he hit another! And another, he was a machine! I have no idea how cricket works. No Ogden idea. Ogden hit so many cricket balls out into the sea that we had to stop play. We'd run out. It was a stunning win, and we carried Ogden back across the sand and into the camel. Even though he'd won the match pretty much single-handedly, he insisted it was all down to the bat and plenty of practice. Ogden was solid gold. I have no idea. No idea how it works, but we probably need to find a cricket ball. How's that? <laughs> what a great day that was. <laughs> and we've beaten Appledore every year since. Those poor chaps never did recover from Ogden's incredible batting. <laughs> Interesting. But where could it be? Is it here? It it's Slippery Derek. Octopi is famous for the Herdini like ability to escape any tank or trap. This one is thinking of making a break for it. Slippery Derek. I can even look inside you. That is kind of slightly disgusting. Alright, Slippery Derek. It's, it's not there. Uh, but maybe it's here. In the, there we go. A barnacle cluster. Got it. Barnacles grow around the cricket ball. That's pretty funny. Hey, Morris. Remember when we found one of these heavy balls on the beach and I dropped it on your toe? Yeah, I can still feel it. It hurts. All right. Uh, do we have any dicks? <laughs> Sparky. I'm getting the scent of Grenkins again, Morris. Good. I'll pop up to let you know when we're close to one. Thank you. That's what I wanted. 
Uh, but we're seismologists. Angie Potts. Doc Bradford and Angie Potts are seismological postgraduates from University College London. who have been studying Shelmerston for several years. When their remote instruments detected unusual activity, they headed straight for the island to investigate in person. Doc and Angie are becoming increasingly concerned that something unprecedented, unpre whatever, is happening on Shelmerston. The seismograph readings show a pattern of activity that hasn't been recorded before. Unprecedented. Unprecedented, isn't that a word? Anything in the world, an alarming escalation of tremors suggesting something very significant is about to happen. Yeah, things are gonna blow. Arthur Berganzi. Arthur has been told repeatedly not to climb up that rusty old anchor, but he just will not listen. Probably he needs to fall off of it so that he will pay attention in future. Just keep on climbing, buddy. Do it. I approve. Humphrey Jack but Jackson's plot. There have been some complaints about the state of Humphrey's plot. Pretty sure we can find a dig here. What is that? What is Wait, that looks that looks like this. The sink. Oh it's a it's a pretty nasty sink. Like that? It's exactly like that. That's a dick. 14? You want me to find 14? Oh my god. Laura Baxter's allotment. Do we have anything that we can find here? Laura Baxter. No. Nope. Don't think so. There's more stuff here though. Vincent Melford's vegetable patch. The bee fields. This looks like flowers and the and the cat. There's like five flowers on the thing. There's a uh, cat ball here. Where where and, and then. Uh, wait, do I have to... There's a kitty cat. Oh, this is actually the right spot. Oh, that was the cat bowl! I'm glad we found the cat. That's a... Yeah. I don't even know what that was. A wart? With a wart? Oh, reach the end. All right. Well, oh wow, we're flying over pretty fast. Is there any munchkin, grandkin here? Doesn't seem like there is. What about the boat? There is one, but there's also a guy with a memory. Um, kind of looks like a house. The thing. Okay, but well we're gonna. Listen to Henry Nancaro first, bootlegger and music teacher. I remember when a young Ogden asked to join the Shelmerston Silver Band. I recognized his talent immediately. He could play anything, that lad. Literally anything. Oh, trumpet. Eventually he settled on the sousaphone, which he always insisted on playing with his lucky bronze mouthpiece. Huh. One evening after the Silver Band played a storming concert in the Camel, Ogden and Sally got it into their heads to go for a night swim in the harbour. You'll love and all that. Ogden left his mouthpiece behind, and when we came back the next morning to pack up, it had disappeared. So wait a minute, he has a lucky mouthpiece? He has a lucky bat? Did he sell a soul or something? It really rattled him. Ogden was worried he wouldn't be able to perform without it. But of course, next time we played, he was just as good as ever. Didn't need any lucky mouthpiece, sir Ogden. He could play anything, that lad. <laughs> what is that? 
<laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right. Ogden was so talented. A real virtuoso. <laughs> oh, I loved listening to him play. Oh, speak for yourself, Morris. It was a terrible racket. Oh, come on. Couldn't be that bad. Could it? So we need to... I'm gonna look inside of the boat. Is there anything here that resembles... This is a whiskey still. <laughs> Amazing! This is, this is not what we're looking for, is it? This, this probably isn't either. No. No, 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 no. But is there cupboards? It also doesn't look like it. I don't know what it looks like. Is it a, car a carton or... Oh, there it is. It's the toolbox. There. That's exactly the thing. Great. But we also need to find his mouthpiece. And we got it. That's a dick. Definitely a dick. No doubt about it. Can't tell me otherwise. Right, where could his mouthpiece be? Maybe his mouthpiece is in the distillery thing, though. No, not that one. This one? I don't think so. <gasps> Wait, are these mouthpieces? Whiskey funnels? That's not a funnel. <laughs> it's his mouthpiece. They seem to have been using it as a funnel. These bootleggers are very resourceful. They are. That's quite funny. It's a good thing I looked there. Right, so do we have... Let's check here. That's a lot of buoys. But there's no... No, uh, no thingy here. There's one here. What does that look like? What? Is it on this side? Or somewhere else? It's not the air horn. But what is it? Uh, wait a minute. What could it could it possibly be? I don't see anything that looks like the thing that we're looking for. Nautical tape measure? No, 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 no. What? What are we? What are we even looking for? This barometer? No. Oh, maybe it's this? No? What? Is it the anchor? Postcard wreck? No, not really. Is there anything on the side? Ooh, there's a... Uh, there's just stuff that we cannot do anything with. Okay, so it's... It has to be... Oh my god, it has to be one of those... It's in one of these windows. Signal flags, it's not the flags. It's not the radio?
What is it? Harpoons? Definitely not the harpoons. A winch? It's the winch. That is weird. But we got it. That's a dick. <laughs> They're all dick shaped. All of them. I wonder though, there was a way that we could map. Crankins? Oh, look at that! It's my collection of tiny peepees. Uh, Alright, let's go into the pub. There's a thing here. We can go inside. But what exactly are we looking for? There's nobody with a memory here, right? What does that look like? It looks like a... It looks like a boob. What could it be? The barrel? Pickled eggs? Oh, there's actually eggs in there. I don't think it's the pickled eggs. Well, Rockmeister pills? Felian table beer? Is it this keg? Karaoke machine? Uh... What? You become more excited when I look. Look it from this way. Oh, wait a minute. How does... how does it work? It has to be the... the thing in the middle. There. Oh, it's an... it's another weird... slice and dicey thing. Oh, I see. Well, we got it. We found another... Dingleberry. That's definitely a Dingleberry. Right, so we got the pop done. Time for toast. This building is the stern half of the Beatrice Inn. Aha! A former Shelmerston fishing lugger was converted by Burp and Gugu in the early 90s. This toast room serves dry toast almost exclusively to the fish folk. There's always a queue. Until they came up to the land, fish people had never eaten dry food and they adore it. Toast is their fav absolute favorite. It is the main reason the fish folk integrated with the economy and practices of the dry ciders. It is said that until toast they had no interest in money or clothes. <laughs> really? Oh that looks like uh, that looks like little Bradman over here. Toasty. Wait, why are you Ah, because it's another weird slice thing. Stop doing that. Oh, at least we got another... ...spot of diarrhea. It's all poop related. Yo, these are actually fish people? Oh, what do you know? I thought it was just a figure of speech, but now there's also birds. Shelmerston City Hall. Signpost. Do you have any memories? You don't. Wait. Pop Piper. John Dory. <laughs> Laughter. <laughs> what? Oh, no, not this guy. Hello. Ready for some fun? <laughs> what is this? Oh, uh... 
Hello. I'm Mr. Whitstable. Welcome to Mr. Whitstable's Riddle Game. <laughs> Morris, we don't have time for this. Let's get back to work. Mr. Whitstable just wants you to enjoy yourself, solve my riddles, and achieve true happiness. Well, these do seem kind of fun. Whatever, Morris. Oh, Sparky. Um, okay, Mr. Um, Whitstable, uh, what do I have to do? <laughs> Hooray! Just select one of my fiendish riddles, then go off and find the object it's referring to. Easy. Well, actually, they're really hard. <laughs> ha! Oh, we got this. Come on, Sparky. Mm. All the bench will be shining over the camel this month. Welcome to Mr. Whitstable. Heart cell. Find this object. Heart cell. What? Is it here? Heart cell. I'm sorry, Mr. Whistable. Th these riddles are really hard. They are hard. It may be unfair, too. But hey, if you don't have what it takes to become a riddle master, Morris... No, no, no. I I I'm sure I can figure them out, Mr. Whistable. Okay, Morris. I'll give you another chance. You'll have to go back and choose which riddle you want to look for, and then think really hard about what the riddle could possibly be referring to. Oh, will do. Oh, thanks, Mr. Whistable. I, I won't let you down. Morris! This is so confusing. Houdini cephalopod? Oh, we got a trophy. Royal tuber? The worms? The wizard seagull? I... wait. Wait a minute. Are you not a wizard seagull? <laughs> No idea what you are. You're weird. <laughs> All right. So that's not it. Audrey's seafood bar. Oh, I was zoomed out all the way. Uh, and then we have another. What? It, that looks like a pot, doesn't it? There's a pot there. Audrey Pickering. Art is the local entrepreneur with her fingers in many fish pies. Not content with running a landscape gardening company in Shelmerston's satellite internet consortium, she recently opened a seafood bar to take advantage of the tourists with a ready supply of seafood. Right, show me the pot. It's definitely the pot. With, with clams and mussels. What's a cephalopod? That's a turd. I was, I'm still thinking about that riddle. What's a cephalopod? Also, the wizard seagull. If we find any of those things, then... Heart cell? Is that like a cage? Keep our company. What can we find here? Is it a fish? What are we looking for? Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can zoom in. What is this? What is... It's a smokehouse. But what are we... What is the thing that we're looking for? Wait, is it this thing? Kind of looks like it is. Look at it from this angle. There we go. Huh. Done. Fresh kippers. And we found another... That's... Looks more like a... Uh, what do you call that? Animal with the antlers. I was about to say moose. It's not a moose. Crab shack. Crab shack. <gasps> there's a memory. Oh, and there's also... What the fuck is that? 
What is that? What is that thing? Okay, first of all, we're gonna listen to the memory. Sally Mapes, Ogden's widow? We were 14 when we started going out. Me and my friend Cassia had started a beach clean at the weekend, and Ogden turned up with his mate Godfrey. I had no idea Ogden liked me. He was the tallest in our year, and we all fancied him. By the time we reached the little cove at the north end of the beach, he'd asked me to come to a concert he was playing in. I said yes. Mm, He'd been going out for a few years when I applied to Floristry College on the mainland. I didn't tell Ogden. I didn't believe I'd get in and didn't want him to think I was trying to get away from him. Ogden might have looked mature and confident, but he was a gentle soul, not nearly as sure of himself as he looked. But I did get in and he was gutted. I felt terrible. I didn't want to hurt Ogden. He said he didn't mind, but I could see he was covering. My last week on Shelmerston was really hard. Every time I saw him, it felt so strained, and I couldn't sleep. Finally, on my last night, I made a decision. I would take an apprenticeship at the garden centre on the island instead, so we could stay together. It felt like the right thing to do. I would tell Ogden in the morning. But when I opened the door the next day... I found Ogden's sousaphone left on the doorstep. I was terrified. What did it mean? What had he done? Uh-oh, did he leave? I ran down to his house, my heart in my mouth. His mum, she never did like me, was a little bit smug. She told me Ogden had sailed off to New Zealand. He was headed to Christchurch, she said, and didn't know when he was coming back. Then she shut the door. Oh, God. I was more than a bit tearful, but... You know, looking back, I think we both needed to have a bit of an adventure. Well, he got an adventure, all right? Dang, he went to New Zealand? I spent a lot of time with Sally during this period. We used to meet up quite often when she returned from Floristry College, and I was working at the museum. For a while, I thought maybe we would get together. But she always seemed a bit... out of reach. Uh, sort of distracted. Well, it makes sense now. Hmm. It's sad. I have no idea what that... that thing in the lower right corner is, though. 